Welcome to Velociraptor, a unique online source for an in-depth look at roof framing. Please visit us at www.velociraptor.com to download the illustrations you'll be seeing in this tutorial and to find information on other tutorials in this series. Let's get started with common rafters and a simple gable roof. We'll begin by taking a look at the roof framing plan. The dimensions are 24 feet by 36 feet. These are your common rafters. These will be 2 by 10s at 2 feet on center. Verge rafters are the end rafters, and they sit on top of the gable end walls. These are your barge rafters. We're going to make these 2x6s, and they're held up by 2x4 lookouts. And the ridge beam extends the entire width of the building. This is a 3D view. This is your common rafter, and this is your verge rafter, which we said sits on top of the gable end wall barge rafters again, and your 2x4 lookouts, and your ridge beam. Let's take a look at a cross-section view now. An essential part of understanding roof framing is to take a look at this right triangle as indicated in red. This sits on top of the plate line. The span of the building is 24 feet. Half the span is 12 feet, which makes up the total run. This is the base of the triangle, also known as the adjacent side. As you can see, this goes from the building line to the left for 12 feet to the plane of the framing point. We have a 912 pitch, and the total rise is 9 feet. This leg of the triangle is known as the opposite side and it goes up to the framing point starting from your plate line. The hypotenuse of the triangle goes from your framing point to your building line and it terminates where your building line meets your plate line and it sits on the framing reference plane. This is the height above plate line which we'll talk about in a minute. Let's take a little bit closer look at the framing point, and that sits at the apex of the triangle. Here's a 3D view, and you can see the red dot here. That's the framing point. If you view this from above, you'll see that it sits at the center of the ridge beam and the common rafter along the framing reference plane. And this is the point where everything is going to be framed to. A height above plate line, the distance which we've yet to determine, and here's the plan view and the framing point. Let's talk about the overhang. It's going to go from the building line to the fascia line. In our project, this is going to be 1 feet 4 inches. Let's examine a little closer the mathematical rafter length which is the hypotenuse of the triangle. It sits on the framing reference plane. The framing point again sits at the apex of the triangle and it goes to the building line. The distance between these two points is called the mathematical rafter length. And we're going to talk about how you come up with that formula. You have to come up with the unit length. And this is basically the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The unit run is 12, and the unit rise is 9. Remember, this is a 9 12 pitch. Now you punch in this formula 12 squared plus 9 squared. You take the square root of that, and the result is 15, and this is the unit length. Now we want to multiply the unit length by the total run, and that's how we come up with the mathematical rafter length. 
In the example we're looking at now, we're just going to use a two foot run. This is just a little bit easier to visualize. So we enter on our calculator two feet times the unit length of 15. And the result is 30 inches, or 2 foot 6. And that's the mathematical rafter length. You can also refer to the appendix, F3. And if you look at the table conversion guide, where you see the unit run of 12, just look down to the pitch at 9, and you'll see the unit length is 15. This is the rafter worksheet. This is where we're going to input all the information that we've just discovered. The rise we know is 9. Height of a plate line is 7 inches, and that's determined by taking two-thirds of the rafter width, in our case this is a 2 by 10. The fascia height is 6 inches. Unit length we just talked about, we said that was 15. Now we want to figure out what the ridge setback is. So this is one half of the ridge thickness, so you multiply 0 0.5 times 1.5, an inch and a half, and the result is 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch. Looking at the elevation view, here's the ridge beam, ridge line, and half the thickness. And the plan view, looking from the framing point to the setback, in our example this will be 3 quarters of an inch. Let's take a look at the unit lengths again, plugging this formula into the rafter worksheet. This is the common raptor. The total run is 12. The unit length is 15. Multiply those two numbers together, and the answer is 180 inches, or 15 feet. For the overhang, we said that was 1 foot 4, or 1.333, times the unit length of 15, equals 20 inches, or 1 foot 8. Back to the layout. Here's the mathematical rafter length. Again, that was 12 feet times 15 unit length, giving you an answer of 15 feet. The mathematical overhang length, which goes from the building line to the fascia line, so it's 1 feet 4 inches times 15 giving a result of 20 inches, or 1 foot 8. Next we'll be looking at the seat cut, and this is determined by the height above plate line, which we said was 7 inches. Here's the ridge setback. This is your plancher cut, and that's determined by your fascia height. All right, at this point, we've gotten all the information that we need to begin cutting our rafters. Please check out part two, where I'll show you how to cut the rafter, determine the height of the ridge beam, and to put it all in place.